Hi, Stephen Michael here, and in today's episode, we're going to talk about the gear you should buy in order to get started with your filmmaking career. Just like you, when I first started as a filmmaker, I didn't know which way to go. Should I get Canon? Should I go Nikon? Fuji maybe? There's Sony, there's RED. With there being so many different options out there, it's always a hard choice on which camera is right for you. So I'm gonna give you my opinion on the cameras I've used and what I think works best for me. Prior to filmmaking, I was into the photography world. When I started looking for a camera, the cameras I was looking for was more geared toward photography, so I started with the Nikon D5100. After being with Nikon for a little bit, I wanted to dive more into video and most of my mentors or most people I were talking to were leaning me towards Canon. Uh, most of the industry was Canon based. Finding Canon lenses was a lot easier than getting Nikon lenses. So I eventually made the jump over to Canon and that was a world of difference for myself. Switching over from Nikon to Canon, there was there was a huge difference as far as at least the menu system. Uh, it was much more user friendly. The learning curve of learning how to operate the Canon was much more smoother and much more easier than when it came to Nikon. And then the video capabilities, I believe I had a larger range of what I could do with the Canon camera. For the next two years, I spent my journey with Canon and we had some really good times together, but I was, I was looking for more um, Canon at the time wasn't being very innovative. Everything they seemed to be putting out was at the bare minimum as far as upgrades with their cameras. And uh, at the time, Sony was making a really big noise in the market with mirrorless cameras and just changing the game completely. So I decided to jump on the Sony bandwagon and I became a Sony shooter. Sony's menu system was a little bit more challenging than Canon's, but after a few days with it, it became second nature. What I loved about the Sony cameras, they was offering 4K with the full frame sensor. I could get up to 30 frames per second in 4K, uh, 120 in HD. So all the specs that Sony was offering made me make the switch over to Sony. On top of it being mirrorless, being a lighter camera, I still have my photography capability. I was able to switch back and forth between video quite often and just the look that Sony gave you, I believe at the time was both B and Nikon and Canon. That finally brings me to the Blackmagic Pocket 4K cinema camera. If you're looking for strictly just the video camera or just a cinema camera, the Blackmagic Pocket 4K is the way to go. Uh, with the price around roughly around $12.95, it's both cheaper than the Sony a7 III and the Canon EOS R and I believe the Canon R6. At $12.95, you get a 4K cinema camera with unbelievable quality. You can shoot up to 60 frames per second in 4K. 120 and 2K if I'm not mistaken. And with the range you have with this camera, it's just unbeatable at that price. My one gripe with the Pocket 4K camera is that it's a micro four thirds lens mount. Uh, so meaning you would have to get, if you're a Canon shooter or a Sony shooter, you would have to get a lens adapter to attach your lenses to it. But it just drives that price up about another 200 bucks depending which lens adapter you get. <sighs> no. I lied, I have two gripes with this camera. My second gripe with this camera is just the ergonomics of the camera. I'm not, I'm not in love with the body. The body's a little awkward. Um, so you kind of have to get different mountain plates if you're mounting this on a gimbal. Um, just the body shape in general. Blackmagic is going against the grain as far as how the bodies look of their cameras. But as far as everything inside the camera, it is my favorite menu system by far. It's the easiest to learn, easiest to fly through. They make everything so easy with that big LCD panel on the back. You really can't go wrong with this camera in any way. If I was to be completely transparent, if this camera was out when I first started, this would have been my first camera choice. Earlier this year, as I progressed in my filmmaking career, I made the decision on purchasing a RED. Now, if it wasn't for RED releasing the new Komodo earlier this year, I would still be working with the Black Magic. But RED released the RED Komodo earlier this year, uh, being their consumer camera, because uh, if we all know, their cameras can run up to anywhere from 10 grand to like 50 grand or even more, once you start including the accessories and so on and so on. So if you do have the extra funds to spend, I would get the Red Komodo over the Blackmagic Pocket 4K because one, you do have that red color science. You get to shoot up to 16K, 
It's natively a RF mount. It, when you purchase the camera, it, it comes with an RF to EF mount, so you can attach your Canon lenses to it. Also, you'll be able to have a red camera on your equipment list, which will help bring in jobs just off of the name alone. With the Rekka motor coming in around just $5,995, you're looking to spend around $3,000, $4,000 more dollars than you would as if you was to purchase the Blackmagic Pocket 4K camera. With that being said, if you're just getting started out, I would buy the Blackmagic Pocket 4K because you're getting a great image at 4K for only $1,200. And then all the extra money you was gonna to use to spend on the RED, you can buy lenses, you can buy batteries, you can get your tripods, you can start focusing on other areas in filmmaking such as audio and lighting and so on. Because as we all know, filmmaking is one expensive business. I hope this episode was helpful to you and helps you select your next camera in the near future. I'm not sponsored by any camera I mentioned. I'm not sponsored doing this video at all. As you can see, I'm just getting started. I'm just figuring this out and I'm trying to make your path, your journey to filmmaking a little bit easier.